Hi, y'all. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when you when in his glory shall be revealed, you shall be glad also with exceeding joy. I'm going to stop there. Trials with benefits. Father, we come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, I ask that you anoint me to preach. Anoint them to hear, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Trials are not easy to go through. I don't care what kind of trial it may be. Emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, whatever. They're not easy to process. They're not easy to go through. But they have benefits to them. God does not allow Satan to... Well, let me rephrase that. God tests for victory. Satan tempts to get us to overthrow our faith. So, like Peter said, they could not strange when you have the fiery trial. Trials are inevitable. Y'all, they will come throughout our lives. They're not, no matter what spiritual high we come to, no matter how much we think we understand the Bible, there is not a point in time where trials will cease. This side of glory anyway. When we die or the trump sounds, yes, trials will cease. But until the trump sounds, we will have trials. We will have tests of faith that test our faith. Peter said, think it not strange. And oftentimes we get into trials and we run away from the Lord. I've done it I don't know how many times. Lord, I don't understand this trial, so I, I kind of back off from our relationship. When the reality of it is, what we need to do is press into him that much more. Peter said, think it not strange. In other words, trials will come. Trials will come. This Christian walk is not a... Walk in the park. It's not lollipops and roses. First Peter chapter four also says your enemy the devil goes about seeking whom he may devour. And that is his ultimate goal. Let me find it, hang on. All right, First Peter chapter four. No, chapter five says, verse eight says, "Be sober and vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour." See, this is Satan's end goal. Is to get us to overthrow our faith and walk away. So, so he allows, God allows the devil a certain latitude at times to tempt us. And he may throw trials at us. But the reality of it is, 
the trial is twofold. It has two purposes here. God's reason for allowing it is to strengthen our faith. Satan's end goal from that trial is to overthrow our faith. It's to get us to say, I can't do this anymore and quit. That is Satan's end goal. Satan is not... Just out here just to play, y'all. He desires our soul. So, there are times where the Lord allows trials and tests to, te to test our faith. Is it as pure as it needs to be? Or are we still somewhere to end this relying on the flesh? Our faith has to be tested. It's inevitable. Isaiah 48.10 says, Our faith has to be tested in the furnace of affliction. Great faith has to be tested. Faith alone has to be tested. If, if we're not facing difficulty, The reality of it is the majority of us will not pray. We pray when we're in trouble and no other time. I'm guilty of it too. We pray when something goes wrong and no other time. We study when something goes wrong but not on a daily basis. Trials come as it regards from the Lord's point of view to draw us closer to Him. That is His ultimate goal, is to draw us as close to Him as possible. And at times, He has to allow trials and tests to draw us back to Him. Peter said, think it not strange. The trials which are to try us. The Bible says God chastises those he loves. Chastisement is not easy to go through. Trials are not easy to go through. But at the end of the day, if we, if we go to him with our faith anchored in Christ and Him crucified and want to know, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What are you, what are you trying to teach me through this trial? Okay. Let me give y'all another example. Moses was on the backside of the desert for 40 years. Had no communication with God, at least that the scripture says, until the burning bush. I can't imagine being in a desert for a day, much less 40 years. But there is a purpose behind it. Joseph went from the pit to the palace. There was a time from the pit to the prison to the palace. There was a time. There's a reason why God allowed him to go into the palace to the prison. And that reason was to deliver his people. Out of famine. See, Joseph didn't know what was going on. It's the same way with us at times. We don't understand the trial we're in. We feel like the Lord's a million miles away and we're like, Lord, where are you at? Why are we, what is the purpose of, of the trial that I'm currently in? I'm doing my best to serve you, 
and yet it feels like all the hell is breaking loose around me and against me. He told when they te when Satan come to him and asked him to test Job. He said, "You may do this, 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 and this, but do not touch his life." We don't know the conversation that is going on in heaven between God and Satan at times regarding us. We don't know. And God could be allowing Satan to tempt, to test us, to tempt us, to bring forth our faith and build our faith. Because no matter how spiritual we think we are, when trials come, we actually see ourselves as weak as we are. See, if we did not have trials, our self-image would skyrocket. Look what I did. Trials come at times not only to draw us back to our first love, but to keep us humble. You go and you read 2 Corinthians 12, Paul's thorn in the flesh. We don't know what it was. It really doesn't matter. But the Bible says he besought the Lord three times. Specifically for that issue. And the Lord finally spoke to him and he said, my grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient to see us through whatever trial we're in. Whatever trial it may be. As long as we don't quit. See, like I said, Satan and God have two different, two different purposes for the trial. Satan wants us to quit. And throw off our faith and say, God, I can't do this anymore. God wants to take the trial and turn it into victory. God wants to take the strongholds of the devil and make them strongholds for his glory. Trials with benefits. The intention of the of the trial is to draw us closer to our Father. And we think at times, Lord, this is too hard. I can't do this. You're allowing too much. The Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard against him. Satan is on a leash. At least as it regards the child of God. He can go so far and no further. Go read Job. He can go so far and no further. The trial that we find ourselves in right now, whatever trial it may be, will not last forever. There will come a day when the trial we are in will lift. But in the meantime, how do we handle being in said trial? Once again, I go back to Joseph. Joseph never once complained. He didn't know why his brother sold him, sold him into Egypt. But notice 
when his when his brothers come back to buy bread or to buy grain, what did Joseph tell them? You meant it for harm. God meant it for good. He has us where he has us right now for a reason. You're going through this trial. We're going through these trials for a reason. God does not just make us have trials without benefits. He's not gonna he's not gonna allow Satan to come in and give us trial after trial after trial after trial without some sort of reprieve. I call them faith flashes. And oftentimes when we get in these trials, we don't see any way out. We don't see any way out. We're in the middle of the desert. Lord, there's no water. There's no food, just like the children of Israel. And we start to complain. Lord, this trial needs to be over with. I can't stand it. And then he'll drop one little word in, in your spirit. He'll drop one little phrase. He'll drop one little scripture in your spirit that is enough to renew your faith to continue to walk through the valley. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We will go through valleys, y'all. They're inevitable. We will have tests. We will have trials. But if we do not stop, if we do not quit, our faith will be purified through the process of said trial. Job 23.10 says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he trieth me, I shall come forth as gold. Our faith has to be purified. Every single one of us. There is not one of us on this planet that our faith is perfect. Not one. In fact, I don't think there's ever been one. That their faith, they didn't question at some point in time. But their faith did not quit. Their faith did not quit. God can deal with anything except one thing. He cannot deal with a quitter. Like I said, y'all, this is this is Satan's end goal. Satan's end goal by trial after trial after trial is to weaken our faith to the point we quit. That's his end goal. On the other hand, God's end goal with this is to draw us closer to him. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God and I will draw nigh unto you. The trial is meant to draw us closer to our Father. It's not to overthrow our faith. It's not to make us quit believing. It is to purify our faith in the furnace of affliction so when he gets through, it comes forth as gold. The trial 
is ultimately to show us what's on the inside of us. Because when we're on the mountaintop, when we're on a spiritual high, we think everything's good. It's in the valleys where we murmur and complain. Once again, go look at the children of Israel. They were all ready to go out of Egypt. And then they get into the wilderness and they tell Moses and Aaron, why did you lead us out here? Why did you leave us out here? Why did you lead us out here with no food and no water? Mummering and complaining. We all do it. We're all guilty of it. But it is not pleasing to God. Because it ultimately is a lack of faith. And in the midst of a trial, it is so easy to start complaining and murmuring. Lord, why? Why are you leading me here? Why are you taking me through a desert? Why? Okay, y'all think about it. He took them through the desert to show them his power. He provided manna from heaven and water out of a rock to slake the thirst of some four million people. And feed four million people. And not only that, but the manna they collected, the Bible says if they let it stay on the ground the next day, it stunk. Except on one day. Friday, because they couldn't collect it on Saturday with the Sabbath. Our God can do absolutely anything. Anything. We need salvation. The cross paid. See, here's the thing, y'all. It would be one thing if he left us to our own devices. It would be it would be one thing. But he didn't. He gave us his son so that we may come to him 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Paul said that I come boldly through the, um, to the throne room of grace to find help in my time of need. Are we, are we going to prayer when we feel burdened with this trial? Are we going to prayer or are we mummering and complaining? Myself included. See, and this is one thing I've learned through this. When he gives a sermon, it's to us first. It's to the preacher and pastor first. It's got to be applied to our heart first. And I had to learn this the hard way. Lord, why did you allow certain stuff? What is the... What is the lesson here that I'm missing on what you're trying to teach me? But I'm telling you, if we keep the faith in Christ and Him crucify, eventually the trial will cease. Notice what he told the children of Israel on, with Jericho. No, not with Jericho. With Moses when they fought a, when they fought Abimelech. They set Moses on a rock, and he, he 
the Bible says as long as he held his hands up, they had victory. But the minute his hands began to fall, they would suffer defeat. So what did Israel do? The Bible says her and Aaron put a rock under him, set him down, and held his arms up. Notice, notice the typology there. You have the rock that he set on. Christ. You have God the Father holding one hand and you have God the Holy Spirit holding the other. We are not meant to fight these battles on our own. The only battle really and truly we are called to fight is the good fight of faith. That's it. We're not meant to fight sin. We're not meant to fight devils. We're not meant to fight any of this. Our job is to fight the good fight of faith. And the good fight of faith is hard to fight when the devil is shooting his fiery arrows at us. And we're like, Lord, what are, we do? what are you doing? It's not easy to go through trial after trial after trial. Go look at the life of David, y'all. His own son tried to kill him to become king. Saul tried to kill him because he knew that David was the rightful king of Israel. To the point David had to run. And worse, there was a time in David's life, you go and study it out, where he fled Israel and went into the land of the Philistines for 16 months. He was out of the will of God for 16 months. But yet when he came back into Israel, he sacrificed and said, Lord, I have sinned. Same thing with, with looking at Bathsheba while Bathsheba was bathing and ended up lusting after her and going into her and impregnating her. And then that baby dies. But see, notice God's redemption here, y'all. He would marry Bathsheba. And out of that marriage would come Solomon. He can turn our trial into our greatest victory. It may look like, okay, y'all, go back into Judges. No, it wasn't Judges. It was 1 Kings. When Elijah went to the king of Israel and they were in battle and the Lord said, just tell him to open his eyes. And when he opened his eyes, the hills were full of angels. There wasn't no way Israel was going to lose that battle. Faith has to be tested so that when it is tested, it comes forth as gold. Because notice what the Bible says in Revelation. Our works will be tried with fire and the stubble and hay of our works will be burned and destroyed. But yet our works that are for the Lord that are made of gold will withstand trials with benefits in the midst of our trials he will give us one little word 
One little word, because that's all it takes. One little word dropped in our spirit to keep us to continue our walk. To keep us to continue the walk of faith until we see Christ. Y'all, every trial, every test, every heartache will be worth it one day when that trunk sounds and we look him face to face. It'll all be worth it. As long as we don't quit. As long as we don't quit. And, and I know the, the, the thought process, well, God is love. Why is he allowing this? God is love. He's allowing it to show us us. Because even us that are saved and full of the Holy Spirit at times can get exalted in ourselves. Paul said, that's why I was given the thorn of the flesh, so I stay humble and not think more off than I ought about me. Despise not the trial. Hold to your faith through the trial, even though it feels like, Lord, you feel like, okay, you feel like you're Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You feel like you've been thrown in the fire, and Nebuchadnezzar said, turn it up higher, seven times higher. And you're like, Lord, I can't stand this. But in the midst of that fire, The fourth man shows up. He could have showed up before they were thrown into the fire. And prevented them from being thrown into the fire. But he didn't do that. He showed up after they had been bound with all their clothes. And the furnace turned up seven times higher. The Bible says... The Nebuchadnezzar's men died when they threw them in the fire. That's how hot this fire was. But the minute they walked into that fire, the fourth man showed up. And they come out of that fire without even the smell of smoke. Child of God, do not quit. Do not overthrow your faith because you are in a test or in a trial. Because we don't know who God is going to show and who God is going to, who is going to see us walking in that trial and know we're in a trial, but yet know, Lord, there's something about him. He's in this trial. I know he's in this trial, but he's not complaining. I know he's in this trial, but I know they're in this trial, but they're still praying. I know they're in this trial, but they're still studying. I know they're in this trial, but they're still seeking out the righteousness. We don't know who our walk is impacts we don't know do not throw over 
your faith because of the trials. The Bible says joy comes in the morning. There will come a day when that trial will lift. And you will look back at it and you will say, Man, I'm glad I didn't quit. Because once he gets you out of that trial, you'll see the victory that you needed to see during the trial. Don't stop believing God in your trial, in your tribulation. Press into him that much more. Knowing this, knowing that your faith at the end of that trial will be brought forth as gold. And will be that much stronger because you pressed, because we pressed in to God. Because he was our only solution. Seek him for the answer. Lord, what is the reason behind this? What are you showing me? And he may not show you until it's over. But there is a reason. He does not give us trials without purpose. Child of God, hold to the cross. Keep your faith anchored in Christ and Him crucified through the trial. Because it's not meant for us to stay in that trial. It's just like the children of Israel. They weren't meant to stay in the desert. We're passing through to victory on the other side of said trial. If we don't lose faith. Hold to him. Hold to your faith. With the assurance that when this trial is over, your faith will be that much purer and that much stronger because you didn't quit through the trial. Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus, Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you for this word, Lord. Father, I ask that you continue to move. That if they're dealing with the trial, that they draw closer to you. And that you give them faith flashes that they don't quit. You give them just enough to continue to take step after step through the trial. knowing. That when it is over and done, you will bring them forth as gold. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I will see y'all next week.